Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith of New Hope Baptist Church here in Watertown, New York, and I welcome you to our series that we're doing through the book of 1 John that we're calling This Morning's Hope. And today we're going to talk about fighting the good fight of faith to the end. I'm reading 1 John 5, verses 17 and 18, and this is what it says. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not leading to death. We know that no one who is born of God sins. But he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. That's 1 John 5, verses 17 to 18. Now these verses follow on the heel of what John was talking of in 1 John 5, 16, uh, where he was talking about those uh, who drift into spiritual danger and instructions as to how we ought to pray for such persons, uh, warning us about making sure that we ourselves don't fall into the same sorts of traps. Well, today, as we consider the, these verses here before us, uh, we're reminded that we just need to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Now, it says there in verse 17, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not leading to death. Uh, some of the translations render this as that uh, all sin is lawlessness. So, Really, John here is just simply telling us what sin is. Uh, it's ultimately lawlessness at its root. And then he qualifies and says, and there is a sin not leading to death. And again, that goes back to what he said in the previous verse where he was talking about sins that do lead to death. And we had identified, of course, that referring to those instances in which a believer, if they continue headlong uh, in a lifestyle of sin, God could prematurely take them out. And so we had discussed that in our last video. But here he's talking about other sorts of sin, uh, the more common varieties uh, that we all as believers may commit from time to time. It says there in verse 18, we know that no one who is born of God sins. Now, we need to be careful that we don't misunderstand what John is saying. He's not advocating some form of sinless perfection. Uh, in the original language, it gives the idea that the one that we know that no one who is born of God sins. Uh, sins as a matter of lifestyle or continues or persists uh, in a manner of sin. Uh, this speaks of someone who makes it their continual ongoing lifestyle with no repentance whatsoever. But the one who has been born again by the Spirit of God, even when they do fall into sin, uh, they'll grow tired of it or they'll find themselves uh, saying to themselves, you know, this is not who I am. Um, I'm better than this. God has made me better than this. And so uh, that's what he's speaking of there. He's talking about someone who, being a true believer, they cannot persist in a continual lifestyle of sin and it not at least affect them or uh, chide them. He then says, But he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. And I believe that's referring back to verse 16, actually. Uh, the evil one cannot take a believer's salvation from them. They most certainly can suffer many uh, temporal uh, deficits. They may even undergo some form of temporal judgment, but uh, the devil cannot take their salvation, and that's what he's talking about there in 1 John 5, 18. The 17th, uh, early 17th century writer Richard Sibbs had written a wonderful book called The Bruised Reed. And what he does there, he gives some really practical instructions as we think about uh, continuing to fight the good fight of faith and doing so to the end. Let me just mention a few of these, and these are evidences of Christ's work in us. And so as we persist in fighting the good fight of faith, uh, it's just helpful for us to be reminded of, well, what is going on in my heart, and what is, is it that I can detect with respect to Christ? He says here that those who are true believers they're able to do nothing against the truth but for it. And so, am I for the truth? So as I fight the good fight of faith, uh, do I acknowledge God's Word? And when I hear it preached or taught, or when I read it, uh, am I for it? Richard Sibbs also notes, uh, if we had a choice of who rules us, Christ would be our choice rather than ourselves. Uh, so, uh, especially if we find ourselves in a pattern of sin, we need to ask ourselves, who is Lord? Is Jesus my Lord, or am I trying to be my own Lord? He also notes here, having a well-ordered life without fits and starts 
we have a well-ordered heart. And so are our hearts well-ordered? Um, and if not so, uh, when was the last time we had the opportunity to read our Bibles, to study them? Because the Scriptures certainly uh, can order our hearts. And then Richard Sibbs also notes here, being able to practice duties despite contrary to the world, the flesh, and the devil. So even when it's not popular, will we persist in pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ, even when no one else wants to. Some verses as we close out this particular lesson today uh, concerning uh, enduring and fighting the good fight of faith to the end. James 1.27 notes, Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. That's James 1.27. So that gives us a pretty good definition of what constitutes uh, a healthy Christianity. There in James 1.27. And then one final verse, Jude 1.21, as to how we are, ought to fight the good fight of faith to the end. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. That's Jude 1.21. So uh, great verses to think upon and practical insights uh, to go by as we fight the good fight of faith to the end. So this is Pastor Malin Smith of New Hope Baptist Church of Watertown, New York, bidding you godly hope for this day.